You might remember when I did these tiny turned wine bottles for my Christmas tree a while back. Well, today I'm making more. Hey guys, how's it going? If you missed the original video, you can check that out up here. So it's not too often that I do the same project twice. The original ornaments were done for mine and my wife's Christmas tradition. Long story short, we buy, or in this case, make a new ornament based on a significant event that happened that year. However, when I posted the pictures of the originals, a friend of a friend commissioned me to make six sets for her to give as gifts. So, to start this project off, I hit up my lumber dealer and picked up some basswood, which I took to the table saw and ripped two inches off of the board, and some purple heart, which was already cut to the size I needed. Over at the miter saw, I mark out five inches and cut six blanks of both purple heart and basswood. Probably should have cut more seeing as what happened, but whatever. Then with my square acting as a straight edge, I mark out corner to corner to find the center of the 12 blanks. With that done, it's time to convert my workbench into a turning station with setting up the slow speed grinder, throwing the four jaw chuck on the lathe, and bolting the lathe down to the workbench using the custom feet I attached, which if you missed, you can check out up here. I should preface this by saying I'm not a wood turner by any means. I can make things round, but that's about where my turning skill ends. At least for now. I figured I should warm up on something that wasn't going to be a final piece, so I threw a random chunk of wood I'd started playing around with earlier in the lathe. I should also say that this was my first time using the four jaw chuck, and my understanding was that the tailstock wasn't as necessary with this. I was wrong. After throwing the blank back in and playing around a little bit more, using the tailstock this time, I figured I was good to go and jumped over to the slow speed grinder to give the lathe tools a bit of a touch up. I have no idea what I'm doing, but it seemed to work okay. I probably should have had water in the reservoir to keep the edge from overheating, but since it was maybe 5 degrees celsius in the shop, I wasn't too concerned. Nothing was overheating. Well, I guess my heater might have been, but it's supposed to. Like I said earlier, I'm not a wood turner by any means, so I can't explain the process here all that well. Basically, I put the thing in the thing and did the thing with the sharp thing and cut the thing out. Fine, I'll try harder. I mount the blank in the chuck and tighten it down, and then turn the lathe on to about 75% speed. It's variable speed lathe, I don't know what that is in RPMs. About that fast. To get the blank round, I started with the big roughing gouge, and then swapped over to the parting tool to establish the diameter for the bottle itself, using some dividers as calipers. Jumping back to the roughing gouge to get the rest of the blank down, and then the spindle gouge for more of the finesse work. Then I sand down the blank with 120 grit and cut the ends off to come out with this tiny turned wine bottle. Then I just repeated that process another 11 times, more or less. Well, more, not less. Some of the bottles didn't come through perfectly flat when I cut them free with the handsaw though. Last time I just took them to the belt sander and tried to level them up that way, but I wasn't too happy with how that worked out. So this time I tried the four jaw chuck. I just swapped out the jaws for the spindle jaws that I have, wrapped the bottle in a shop towel to prevent marring the surface, and turning off the bottom of the bottle with the parting tool. I had some success here. A couple of the bottles had some funny catches and either got damaged by the jaws or the lathe tool, so I had to remake a couple of them. But this time I made them longer and just cut them off with the parting tool right from the blank, and that worked out a lot better. You'd think I would have recorded that, but no. With all of the bottles turned and parted, I take them over to the drill press and pre-drill into the cork of the bottle and then screw an eye hook into each bottle. And with that, it's time for finishing. In my stain room, I tie some dental floss onto every hook and dip the whole bottle into the can of polycrylic and hang the bottles to drip dry, which worked out really well. I ended up doing three coats with sanding in between coats. And after the last coat, I went through all of the bottles and cut the finished blisters off the bottom. This is just where the finish collected and dried as it was dripping off. Nothing a utility knife and some sandpaper couldn't fix. And the last thing to do was match up a Purple Heart bottle to the closest looking basswood bottle, or vice versa, whichever. 
as long as they were roughly the same size it was good and tie the two bottles together with a little bit of black ribbon and package it up for the client. And with that, this project is done. This was something else I worked on over my Christmas break, and other than it covering my entire shop with a fine purple dusting, it was a fairly enjoyable project. I do like turning even though I'm still a beginner at it, and this was a good project to get some more experience in other aspects of woodworking. I, I really enjoy it. And the client was really happy with them too. And at the end of the day, that's really all that matters. And with that, I'm going to call it a video. So, thank you all for watching, and if you like what I'm doing here, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. If you have any questions or comments, I look forward to reading them in the comment section below. And if you want to see more up-to-date projects, you can follow me on Instagram at JohnTheShriner. Otherwise, I hope to see you in the next video, and have a good one.